And good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. I am your host, Josh Engel. It's a beautiful Tuesday today. Joining me in the studio, Martina Griffin, the executive director of the nonprofit Keep Carol Beautiful, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to uh, the local environment, whether it be beautification, recycling, I mean, waste management, they do it all, pretty much. Uh, good morning, Martina. How are you? Good morning, Josh. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you for joining me on such short notice. Absolutely. Always always a pleasure. So. Yeah, I don't know if folks realize, but um, if we ever have an opening, I tend to call Martina. And she's like, <laughs> I got you. She, I have a lot of data. We, can, we have plenty we can talk about. Oh, yes. It was perfect timing. Well, perfect. So uh, how has everything been going? How are things around the Keep Care Beautiful office? We, um, I don't know if you're aware of it, probably you are, but we um, rolled back our in-office recycling a little bit last year. During COVID, our office was closed for a little bit, and then we reorganized how we do in-house recycling. So right now, you know, the office part of recycling has been very, very calm. We only accept um, household batteries in the office. So if you have any of those, you can always give us a call or send us an email. We'll take those. But we, we typically don't take any other items in office. However... We had probably one of the biggest years in terms of uh, recycling events. Uh, We had the fall e-recycling last year, which was, I thought it was pretty kind of slow, but turns out the data shows it was kind of there in the the middle. We had, I believe, 28,000 pounds of recycling in the fall. But this spring, and this is for for the recycling collected at the event, we were at like top three events we I think ever had. So maybe really? other than the first few where the TVs and computers used to be like giant 15 years ago. But right now we collected over 36,000 pounds of electronics and it was a really big, big collection. So so wow. our spring events went really, really well and we had a ton of stuff. Well, um, it is it is surprising. Uh, yeah. considering that amidst uh, in the midst of the pandemic that you would still KCB would still end up having such a successful turnout or is it surprising because what what were you doing last year sitting at home you know I was just sitting around trying to figure out ways to recycle so now I yeah. see or, or you were cleaning your house and collecting things in your garage and basement and thinking whatever will I do with all the stuff that I finally got to organize and you know we we basically took it all <laughs> it's funny because my wife like she was the one working from home but she was like I need you to like I'm the one going to work, but she's like, "No, nah, I need you to pretty much clean the house. Like I need you to get rid of some of this stuff." So we definitely took advantage of this yeah. of these recycling events. Um, so despite the pandemic, it ended up being a tremendous year. Um, yeah. So e recycling, you said twenty eight thousand pounds. That was in the fall. So that was just the in the fall, fall. The fall twenty twenty, and we had the event at Midway, which is not. Uh, we typically do a little bit better if we're closer to Carrollton. Carrollton is just a very central location in Carroll County. So sure. those events are more um, inviting for it's basically like everybody coming to the center of Carroll County and dropping their stuff off. But um, the fall event was at Midway Church. So it was a little bit closer to Villa Rica, which, uh, which was great. But this this upcoming fall, and we're hosting another fall one, we're going to have one uh, within the Villa Rica city limits. That's our hope. We don't have the location 100%. And, of course, the location at Southwire and Carrollton. So, Excellent. Yeah. We're well, hoping for even more electronics. So, I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, um, well, I'll mm-hmm. tell you what. So, uh, just for folks that, uh, that are tuning in here, uh, we are on Facebook Live. So, if you have any questions for Martina, feel free to go to our WLBB Facebook page. Uh, hop on the live stream that is going on right now, courtesy of Joel. Thank you. And uh, feel free to throw some questions up there for Martina uh, about anything that Keep Carol Beautiful does. Um, <clears throat> let's take a step back. Uh, for listeners who may not be aware what mm-hmm. case, what the mission of Keep Carol Beautiful is, would you uh, let listeners, uh, give listeners an idea of what you guys like to focus on? Sure. We have uh, three three main areas of interest, and uh, our our main um, kind of um focus for the for most of the time is on litter prevention which which basically is litter cleanups and pickups and we have a couple of programs to do that and helping the residents of Carroll County recycle their hard to recycle items because I don't know that that many people are aware that you're really not supposed to throw a paint um, or a container containing liquid paint into your trash can so you cannot technically throw it into trash and you don't have a place to recycle it within the county those <clears throat> Excuse me. Those programs are hard to find, and we're trying to help with our events to to get rid of the items that are either toxic or just you know harmful to the environment. You can so recycle is them. The paint's harmful if it were to. 
it spill could be, or something? It can, it can get into our groundwater and migrate to our streams. And, you know, Carroll County is agricultural, so all those things that get into your food stream are really not that good for you to, <laughs> to eat later. And, um, you know, it's if you if you think about a can of paint, you know, what's going to happen if I put an ounce of paint in a trash can? It's not going to affect anything. But, um, you know, with the amount of paint we collected at the event, you can tell that that's not an ounce of paint. It's, you know, tens of thousands of pounds. <laughs> Pounds of paint that are put into a landfill that and don't then worry. have a really good chance to to get to our drinking water. So and don't worry, we're going to be talking about yeah. those uh, all those spring recycling events here in a second because yeah. those numbers, as we have discovered earlier, are pretty shocking. They're pretty they're pretty high. Yeah, we we were really happy with our results. But what we what we do again is is litter cleanups and we're assessing roads in Carroll County. We do recycling events for hard to recycle materials like electronics, which have a lot of fun stuff like mercury in them. <laughs> so that definitely we don't want that in our streams but um electronics we do tire recycling and tires are a total nuisance and and we try to help the county send them out to to be recycled and not end up in streams and someone's backyard you know little country it's roads breeding mosquitoes breeding mosquitoes and other vectors vector is a really cool word it's a creature that spreads disease. So I would just, yeah, we yeah, read that, all those pamphlets that, from that from name is EPD. unfairly cool. That is way too cool <laughs> for how lame mosquitoes cool. are. I want to be called a vector. I can be a rat too, because rat can, you know, get a disease from one place to the other. So yeah, good if point. you transmit disease from one place to the other, you're a vector. You're a vector. Vectors. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but you know, tires, and then we do batteries in house. And batteries, alkaline batteries, can be thrown away, but it is always better to recycle and not produce more materials if you can recover the, whatever you use to to make um, anything you know a plastic bottle or a aluminum can so while we have some recycling programs that are available to residents in the cities and in the county uh, a lot of those items are not recyclable in the regular process so we try to get those so so um yeah we do this uh, typically twice a year with those recycling events for paint and tires, um, we did them every few years, but maybe that will change too. So who knows? Yeah, who knows? Well, yeah. uh, clearly KCB is, um, as far as impact, I mean, and I know there's a there's always been a, based on your reports, I know it changes every year, but there's like a substantial uh, reinvestment back into the community um, compared to the donations that come in. I mean, right. you guys do a lot, a lot of work. And uh, I think that there's no better way to to analyze uh, or just fully showcase how much work you guys do uh, other than checking out the data. So right. uh, mm -hmm. I know that um, the spring uh, recycling events that you guys put together, what all events did you have? We had our e-recycling uh, in April. That was April 15th. And then the month later, we had a three-in-one recycling event, which... No one told me that we never have in the past <laughs> done a three in one. So it was a little bit. A they little didn't bit, want to scare you. Yeah, yeah they, they told me the day off. It's like, you know, we've never done that big of an event. So good luck, Marty. This but is crazy. This is a crazy <laughs> idea. We had a little bit of a backup at the very beginning. We had a few people show up a few minutes early. But after that initial wave came through, it was it was pretty smooth. We were we, we did good, I think. So <laughs> so um, so we did the tires recycling and we did the paper shredding, the after tax financial document shredding. And we did the hazardous waste collection, which includes paint, fertilizers, um, batteries, and fluorescent bulbs. Wow. Um, did we get any numbers on uh, on the amount of stuff collected there? Yes, we did. We did. So we were very happy to get some sponsors for the event. We partnered with the Carroll County uh, government, of course, and the Sheriff's Department to help us uh, collect the tires. So on the tires, we collected two full tractor trailers of tires oh during that event. And the total weight of those tires was, I believe it was just under 24 tons. Um, <gasps> one truck was like 20, um, 11 something. The other one was, was just under 13. So 24 <clears> tons. And these were just tons. around the local community, just in yes, the Yes, and these are the people stuff. who took their time to bring them to us instead of just throwing them out. Because we have, um, it, it is a big issue for most communities that the tires end up in um, like, you know, on the side of the road and people drive into other pe people's property and throw them where they cannot be caught or seen. So so the um, sheriff's department picks up with the road crews. They pick up maybe eight to ten tractor trailers of tires a year from the roadsides and then they have to ship them off. Communities that do uh, tire recycling on a regular basis, they see a really, really steep drop in, in those roadside kind of dump sites for tires. So we're hoping to continue doing that. And 
we'll talk about it in a minute, but <clears throat> with the grant funny, uh, uh, funding that we got for this event, we can do another one in the fall and then another one in the spring. So we can continue there's having those. It. Yeah, so as long as there's a need and as long as we get those, we will continue doing those events and just collecting the tires up front so people don't feel like they have nowhere to go. Because if you take them to a transfer station, the county has to charge you for it because then they have to pay for trans transporting them to the recycler and all that. So the, the fee at the um, transfer station is $5 right now. Mm. And we took 12 tires for free. So that is, you know, that is a lot of saving uh, for families that need to get rid of them but may not have the funds to, you know, spend $60 on disposing tires at the transfer station. So we're hoping to to be that resource um, going forward. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, we will continue uh, going through some of the numbers here of the, the spring uh, event that Keep Care Beautiful put on, uh, several events, actually. So uh, remember, we are streaming on Facebook Live. So if you have any comments or questions for Executive Director Martina Griffin, feel free to go onto her WLBB Facebook page and throw those on there. And, uh, and I will ask her while we have her in the studio. So stay with us. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. At Oak Mountain Academy, our daily schedule includes convocation, prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. By doing so, we build a family-like community where all students grow and flourish and personal faith is encouraged. Through community service and a historical approach to biblical study, our students are taught the value of the warrior way, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Oak Mountain Academy, we are a family creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. And we're back to Community Voice. I'm your host, Josh Engel. Joining us in the studio today, we have Martina Griffin, the Executive Director of Keep Carroll Beautiful, the 501c3 nonprofit that is dedicated to keeping Carroll County gorgeous, keeping it clean, removing tires, as we just established here. Uh, and yes, if you are tuning in, there is a Facebook live stream of the episode happening currently, so you can go back and restart and watch uh, and get all the important data that we're talking about here. Uh, we're doing a recap of their spring events. Uh, they do several recycling events throughout the year. They have some in the spring and they have some in the fall. And uh, these are very impressive numbers. We just spoke about tires uh, at their tire recycling collection. They had over 24 tons of rubber uh, and shards of metal. Uh, I say that because I've yep. loaded a few tires uh, in the backs of those trucks, and I typically have to pull splinters of metal out of my hands. So yeah, yeah, those the are wire brutal. and the tires. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're brutal. <laughs> but, I mean, that's 24 tons, uh, that's two full tractor trailers full of tires. Uh, that's an right. incredibly impressive number. Um, and the numbers don't stop there. No, no. Uh, so that was our three-in-one event. So we did the tires, and then we had a paper shredding um, kind of part of it, too, because after taxes, a lot of people like to go through their old documents and you know you have to keep some of them for three years some of for seven so after you're done with them you're left with a box uh, of documents that you really shouldn't throw away because they may have your social security on it and your financial information so um you know some people have medical documents that they keep for a while and then they throw away so so um we opened that for the public to to just bring in to safely dispose right and it's it's targeted for more residential users than businesses but uh, but we partner with the american document securities and they have been a great partner um you know over the time and over the the last few years and they show up with a big truck with those safe deposit boxes and I believe um, they collected uh, just over 6,000 pounds of financial documents during the wow, event. That so, is amazing. Yeah, so the, the, I mean, paper is heavy, but they had, you know, um, those security boxes look like a beefy uh, trash bin that you can roll down the driveway, you know, when the um, um, communities pick it up and uh, they were just dumping into them and rolling them back on the truck. And they had probably 30 of those bins and I think they filled 20 of them all wow. the way up. So. So it was, it, they, they had a lot of traffic too. It's not as popular as the other events. We didn't have too many cars going that way, but but there's a lot of need for that. And it, it's a great help to people who 
again, don't know how to find a place to shred. They don't have a shredder at home and it's probably a little bit better than burning them in your fire pit. So so they, they actually recycle the paper. So again, it finds its way back to the used stream. You don't have to cut new trees and you may get it in your, you know, t- paper towels or toilet paper back. So that is great. Now, how about paint? Paint, um, yes, we, we kind of broke the records on paint. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty expensive to recycle. That is very expensive. So I'm really, really glad we had we had um, Southern Hermit and Garden um, Ace Hardware to help us with some of the costs for this. And, and um, they were a great sponsor. And we recycled um, paint and paint products. Um, we had... 13,360 <laughs> pounds of, of paper. So it's, uh, if you, you know, translate that to tons, it's like six and a half tons of paint products. <laughs> six tons of paint. So, yes. Wow. Yeah. To yeah. be recycled, I guess it's going off to Atlanta to be recycled. I think it actually went to uh, North Carolina. Oh, nice. Okay. It's either that or it went to South Georgia. We, we typically use a company in Atlanta, Atlanta Paint Disposal. They actually have a station in Ace Hardware Store. When you go buy paint, you can recycle your own paint. But again, all of those programs to, to make them work, you have to pay a little fee. So there is a fee associated to the paint collection in the store. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we did it. Uh, we, we collected up to five gallons of paint for free. And everything else was at uh, two dollars and fifty cents, which was really a much lower number than than you get through that other um, program. So so um, yeah, we got a lot of paint. It's exciting wow. because I didn't know we had that much paint in the community. But you know, if you look into your own garage, it's typically a three three or four gallons just sitting there, like collecting dust. Because maybe you painted one small wall in the bathroom, and you st- still have three quarters of a paint can left. And, <laughs> You're not I mean, going to use that red ever again. So. It appears just looking at the trend here. Um, if you build it, they will come. If you, yeah. if you put this together, they will. Matt Skinner got that reference. <laughs> if you, if you put, if you make this event possible and you yeah. make it available to the public and and make it as inexpensive as possible, right? It's it. They really folks will come out, and that's a shout out. I mean, that's a compliment to the community that they will do. Right. They will take that step to to help keep their community clean when it's when it's accessible when it's yeah. easy and you know it's if you take the paint to atlanta uh paint disposal they recycle the paint out into another type of a paint so if you bring a bunch of beige paint to them they may be able to color it and sell it again as a beige paint of some sort so for that event it makes sense that the process is a little more expensive mm-hmm. but uh, they also don't want you to mix the paint with these guys uh, they either recycle it if the paint is good quality or they will just dispose of it uh, dispose of the paint in a kind of environmentally friendly way so they will not release any solvents into their environment they'll neutralize all that so <clears throat> it makes sense to do that um, we try to make it free to the community at least to a certain amount of like residential value and we had a lot of fun figuring out what is a residential kind of a number. So I think five gallons of paint is, is like, you know, one of those big cans or five smaller full cans of paint. So so I think it works and we'll continue doing this. We just need to maybe focus on paint <clears throat> by itself going forward because we had, other than paint, we also had batteries and fluorescent bulbs during that event and fertilizers and cleaners. So... Uh, Carol EMC helped us recycle the bulbs and the batteries, and we collected 1,300 pounds of batteries uh, during the event alone. And we just sent um, our in-house collection in March to them, and it was, I think, close to 6,000 pounds of, no, sorry, it was 2,000 pounds of batteries. Wow. So so we got two, and then um, the 1,300, so we're at, at 3,300 pounds of batteries recycled this year. This is, I mean, so far yeah. we're on like 50 tons of waste. Like, I mean, it's It's like shocking. 350 million tons by now. No, but we, we were just were looking at my crazy notes from our reporting, but um, it's it's crazy. I think we're at like 88,000 pounds of recycling um, of different items. So, so um, wow. this year, that doesn't include the collection last year. So this we're, is Keep yeah. Carol Beautiful doing what Keep Carol Beautiful does best. Yeah, yeah. And we also got 200 pounds of fluorescent bulbs. And fluorescent bulbs cannot be as um, thrown into the trash because they can contain mercury, which is a nasty, nasty substance. It will kill fish and, and uh, it's toxic to humans. So we don't want it in our um, trash stream either. But 
there's really not a good place to recycle those in town. So we try to collect them during the event and we have resources on our website. It's keepcarolbeautiful.org and we have uh, locations that accept them within a reasonable distance from Carrollton. So you can always take them take them there. So we had a question come in on the uh, the live stream. Um, <clears throat> so um, Bob Uglum, I, I want to call him Uncle Bob because I work with his nephew, <laughs> Adam Uglum. Um, so Uncle Bob says, any idea how old gasoline could be properly disposed of? We get that question a lot, and I believe um, we, we have a little cheat sheet at the office. I don't have it with me, but we can definitely put it in the comments. But I think you can either take it to um, some of those auto parts store. I would call them because they're a great resource. They also take oil, as some of them, of them take do. Oil, yeah. And... Um, I think you can possibly take them to the gas station. I don't want to say this too loud because I, I really don't remember. But that's a great question. And there are local resources that will help with that. Um, so I will definitely put a little... We, when we get a question, we typically put it on top of our website just so people can find it easily. We have like a big rotating banner, a link to it, because we, we need to add a few of those to our resource page too. But I think auto parts, parts stores or maybe the oil change places was the answer. But... Um, but um, that's uh, that's kind of um, also we can do it locally. Do, it cannot be dumped anywhere because that is also highly sure highly gets into the water spread. table. Yeah. And that's yeah. not what you want to drink in your yeah. water. Now uh, we only have a few <laughs> minutes before our second break, okay. but uh, I know the e-recycling was very successful as well. Yes, we had uh, the e-recycling in April, and we collected thirty just under thirty six or thirty six and a little change. I lost it now, uh, but that was you know. A ton and more than a ton of items but um as always we we have a little list of what we collected so we have um 189 pcs the pc towers the towers of towers it's like a cool photo <laughs> where you have like a giant you know pallet of of pc towers it's been saran wrapped and it's like yeah, 10 feet it's tall like, it's yeah like, you know it looks like a little little mini skyscraper <laughs> uh we had 217 laptops we got um 111 monitors like computer monitors uh, we had 113 crt tvs these are the big big ones with the glass screen and 104 flat screen tv so um that was again the numbers kind of stay at the same level year to year we, we thought they would kind of dwindle down because the old electronics are out but apparently the new electronics break as well so we we um keep getting more or less those numbers every year Wow. Well, I mean, and if those numbers are consistent, it is a testament to how big the need is. Yeah. I mean, every year these folks keep coming out and they still have new Ooh, electronics. If there's still a second. So Atlanta, a shout out to Carroll County community. Atlanta sure. did their uh, spring e-recycling at Lenox uh, Square, I believe. And they were advertising on TV that they collected 15,000 pounds of electronics during that event. And we're like... Phew. Wow. Come on, we got 36. Amateurs. So, Carroll County, better than Atlanta. Just I mean, a shout out. <laughs> hey, if you ever needed a, a reason to remember that we're the best, yes, there Martina it is. just gave yeah. you one. So, we're going to go ahead and take our second break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, some of Keep Carroll Beautiful's fall events that are coming up, as well as their 5K that everyone is looking forward to. So, stay with us. Health is a journey, it's making better choices, even when it's not easy, it's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. At Oak Mountain Academy, our academic excellence shines through innovation and a personalized educational experience. Our pre-K 3 through 12th grade environment offers a family-oriented atmosphere. We are an independent school with faith-based values and an academy honor code. Our academic standards prepare our students for college and beyond. I'm Patrick Duran, Headmaster, inviting you to visit us on the mountain or at oakmountain.us. Come see how our warriors are creating legacies.
And we're back to Community Voice. I am your host, Josh Engel. We're talking to Martina Griffin, the Executive Director of Keep Care Beautiful. If you're just tuning in, we do have a Facebook live stream uh, of this episode that's going on right now on the WLBB, WLBB Facebook page. I'm getting tongue-tied. So if you have any questions you want to throw in uh, to, for Martina before the show wraps up, feel free to hop on there. You can also go back and watch the whole episode and uh, hear how awesome Carroll County is because the numbers that we just got from Martina in regards to the spring uh, recycling events are unbelievable. 24 tons of tires, 6 tons of paint, like 1,300 pounds of batteries, 6,000 uh, 6, pounds of paper. It just goes on and on and on. It's amazing. Um so that's a this is a lot of recycling here. So uh, now uh, you have the spring events, but that's not the only events you do. From what I understand, you do have fall events as well. That's right. And um, for the tire event, we received a Star EPD grant through the county to cover the cost of recycling the tires. So uh, we talked to the Star EPD program manager, and they're like, "You need to do two of those a year, not just one." So we are doing another tire event in November. The, right now, the date is November thirteenth. It's again a Saturday. Uh, but we're hoping to change the the um, event just a little bit so it's a drop-off event at the transfer station. Uh, we just need to work out all the details. They will be coming up in the next few months. But right now the plan is maybe open it for the whole weekend and people would be, again, only allowed to bring 12 tires, but they can be dropped off. It doesn't have to be within that four-hour window that we typically do our events. Uh, we have our uh, fall electronics events scheduled for October 16th. Uh, that's going to also be a Saturday, 9 a.m. through 1 p.m. And we're going to do this on the Southwire property here in town. The Strong Sustainable Southwire was our sponsor and supporter for all the years that we had e-recycling. So we're super happy to go back to their campus and have the Black Shirt Volunteers with Project Give. They are amazing. We're, we're very excited that um, they're getting us back in in the parking lot at Southwire Drive. So um, we'll have another location in Villarica. We are not 100% sure which one. So that's kind of um, TBD. still under. Yes. To be determined. So those are the two events coming up we also have our 5k fundraiser fundraiser we have our green run on october 30th so we have the registration open we hope as a lot of people will sign up because again we we need to get some funds for those events they are definitely not cheap so so we hope to have another hazardous waste collection next year and we need to basically raise funds for that so our 5k is a great way to get involved and and just sponsor us a little bit with that yeah so this is a <laughs> shout out to any and all businesses i mean this is a great yep. way to uh to advertise your business as well as uh, help a, a nonprofit make a genuine impact. I mean, it, right. look, they have the data. You know what I mean? KCB has the data available. Anyone wants to see just how impactful this nonprofit is, they yeah. can check out their website and see and this we data. Had a, we had a great response from our community. You know, the spring e-recycling was sponsored by um, the, the county. Uh, you guys were there with Gradic Communication covering the event. We had SLM Recycling sponsoring us. Bread Cull Construction threw in a forklift, which was a great help, too. And uh, Tabernacle, uh, they were a great host um, for the event in their, in their location. So we love them. We like to give everyone a shout out. So uh, we appreciate the help, too. So Well, thank you to all the sponsors that helped make the events possible. And again, any anyone out there, whether it be an organization, a civic club, uh, another nonprofit, or other businesses that might want to step up and, and partner with KCB, uh, how, do they get, how do they reach out to you? Uh, they can uh, send us an email at info at keepcarolbeautiful.org or call us at 678 Three two one four eight one six. Excellent, and your uh, and they can also go on your Facebook and that absolutely and follow the Facebook, yeah. like the Facebook, so you can see when the events are yeah. coming up. And uh, well, Martina, thank you so very much for taking the time to join us today. Anytime, Josh. Well, <laughs> text me twenty four hour in advance, and I will be here. I so. always know you will be. You're the best. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, for all of you listening at home, uh, thank you. We'll see you next time.